Hello and welcome to the first of quite a few videos about Dragon Age The Veil Guard. I want to give you some of my impressions in this short video, talking about what we got to see, how I felt about the game, you know, giving you little snippets here and there. Uh, the audio may be muted on those, but I just wanted to flail in excitement and tell you about The Veil Guard. So stay tuned for impressions, and those are coming up in just a moment. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, let's get into it and talk about my overall impressions of the Veil Guard. So we, first off, got a chance to go play the game for several hours. Thanks again to EA, Bioware, and Dragon Age teams for bringing a bunch of creators, some members of the council, and a lot of the press, both domestically and internationally, to get hands-on and a significant amount of time with the game. So uh, thanks for that. Secondly, uh, just reminder, clarification, that the people that attended this event were not playtesters. They were folks invited to get hands-on and then to give you impressions like this one once our embargo lifts. So to get into it, I'm a longtime Dragon Age fan. I've been there since Dragon Age Origins, all the DLC, DA2, DA Inquisition, and I am super, super excited to finally have gotten my hands on some time with the Veil Guard. You know, there's a lot to wonder about. Some people are worried because it's been literally 10 years since we got Inquisition. 10 years between the Inquisition and the events of the Veil Guard in the game's lore. And it's worth the wait. My overall thought on this, it was absolutely worth the 10 year wait to get to go back to Thetis, to see Varric again, to see Morrigan again, to meet and create our Rook. It has become something I'm looking forward to, something that I'm excited to see all the places in Thetis that we've read about, that we've seen about, all the places where we just got them mentioned, maybe in books, maybe in lore or in prologues or epilogues, like Weishaupt Fortress, like Hosberg, like Ravain. Those are all places where iconic characters come from, and we never got to see them until this game. Uh, keep in mind that we only got to see certain parts of the game world. We only got to see a little bit of Weishaupt. We did not get to see Ravain, well, not much of Ravain, but we can't talk about that yet. You'll have to wait till October 31st. We did get to see uh, parts of Arlathan Forest. You know, we we saw Solus again, regardless of how you feel about him and the events of Dragon Age Inquisition. We'll be spending some time with with ye old uh, Dreadwolf, shall we say. But as you can see, we start off the game getting to know Varric, getting to be a whole new character. And frankly, I'm super, super excited about the ways in which we get to create our Rook. Uh, a video coming out a little later today will show you the character creation more in depth. And just the ways in which the game is so amazing. Uh, you may be wondering, I've never played Dragon Age. Can I just hop into Veilguard? Absolutely, you can. Uh, as you saw while I was talking, there are parts of the game that give a little bit of a recap, kind of what happened if you've never touched Inquisition. And you may just be going, who's the Solus guy? Who's Varric? Who's Rook? Why should I care? The game, for me as a longtime fan, but also for friends who are there that had never touched a Dragon Age game, it both pulled you in, gave you a reason you should care about Thetis, and why you should want to go run around on the streets of Minrathus to start this whole adventure again. And the fact that my Rook can be so personalized, I get to have glorious brown skin, great hair options, so much that works for not just a new adventure, a new protagonist, but also, again, iconic places that we've only heard about in Thetis. 
I can't wait to go to Hosburgh. I can't wait to see the rest of Weissop Fortress. Just so you know, we have no clue who's coming back outside of Varric and Morrigan. Please don't ask. We don't know. We only got a few hours with the game. But just seeing Varric from Dragon Age 2 to Dragon Age Inquisition and now to Dragon Age the Veil Guard, for me that makes it worth the 10 year wait. The game looks amazing, it looks beautiful. Uh, just so you know, we got to play on very high-end PCs. We got to capture our footage, you know, at the highest resolution possible. And it was just blowing us away. You know, a lot of people have talked about the hair physics online, and someone's been playing games for a very, very long time. That is something I never thought I'd see in a game the way that hair looks this good, that skin looks this good, Seems that like a lot's expressiveness right looks lots so happened. good. This and this is just a taste of what we're going to get on October 31st. I wish so many of you could have been in that room with us. But, you know, give us a chance to show you what's coming within reason, what we can show you. Let us tell you about mm -hmm. our excitement, oh. any concerns Sweet. some of us may have, because no game is perfect. Uh, Ready no to go. game is going to satisfy everyone at launch. But this is a game Ned, that you sure you're I think this? a lot of people I'm will fine. love, Couldn't that they'll so enjoy, that they'll sink hundreds and hundreds then and hundreds go. of hours into, because just from the slight curated and gated look we got, it was amazing. Thanks for watching. Hang out for more videos. Hang out for more content. And again, thank you, EA, Dragon Age, Bioware, for giving us an early hands on look at Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Can't wait to see you in Thetis on October 31st, no matter where you're playing from. Cheers.